Well, welcome to another edition of the Buyer's Guide. In this edition, we're going to be looking at a ground bait from Dynamite. It's the Swim Stim Silverfish. And here we're going to be doing some tank testing. We're going to mix it up, see what it looks like, see what it smells like. And we're going to put it in a feeder and see how it reacts underwater. Well, the swim stim range has been a very popular ground bait for years and years and years. Even when I first got back into my open match fishing in 2011, swim stim was a very well established uh, name uh, within the dynamite range. And I used to use a lot of their mixes as well as um, their pellets as well. Now this is a mix that was really t shown to me and introduced to me more than anything by Andy Kinder just through the last the winter that's just gone. And he's had some lovely catches of skimmers on the Coldwater Lakes like Boston and Lawford Lakes as well. And I think this is one of the mixes that he's been using. He has used two or three different mixes that he was telling me about and it's really him that highlighted these to me. First of all, let's just have a quick look at the packaging and just see what it's gonna tell us about the mix. Well, as you'd expect, very distinctive packaging. You can't really miss that, can you? It's got the Koi technology on there as well, Dynamite, Swim Stim. It's got a nice window there, which is giving us a nice idea of what the mix is like. It looks very, very fine, very fine. But I mean, it's quite a natural light brown color. Um, skimmers, bream, and roach. So it's telling you it's a, a silverfish mix. You know, it's not just targeting bream or bigger fish. Fine feed, pellet mix. So that's telling you what it's, um, you know, how it's made up. Just flip it over, so look on the bike. Not much information on the bike, other than it's showing you how it can be used. So it's got pole fishing on there, it's got feeder fishing, and you can also ball it in as well, or make balls out of it. So it's telling you it's a nice, versatile, all-round mix that you can use for feeder fishing and float fishing and balling in as well. The only other bit of information on here is right down here, it's giving you the, the weight of the bag, which is 900 grams, which is very common weight for bags of ground bait of this style and it's got a best before BB date there of the 12th 22 for loads and loads of shelf life on it. I've never even used this mix, I have used one or two mixes through the last winter um, of dynamites that were very sweet, the sweeter ones and I will be looking at those in future videos for you but let's open this one up and just see what it smells like and how it mixes up. Okay, it's quite a, it's not a really, really strong mix, smelling wise, to be fair. Not yet, anyway, it probably will change when we add some water to it, but it is very, very fine. Let's just see how it mixes up. As you can see, it's a natural, or quite a natural brown colour. It is fine, so there's not much feed in there at all. I don't know if we'll see more as we mix it, but let's find out. Yeah, I know I've said it already, but can really tell how fine this mix is that's really released lots of flavor now yeah it is quite a sweet mix it's not the sweetest mix I have used some mixes in the dynamite range that are incredibly sweet but this one it has got a hint of sweetness to it and as you can see I'm mixing this just with my hand I'm not using a drill because I know most anglers don't use drills so we might get lumps in it, but to be fair, it's not bad at all, that is it? To say I'm only mixing that with my hand and I'm really dolloping the water in, that's really quite, I'm quite impressed with that. There's not many lumps in there, I mean I'd still put it through a sieve anyway, just like I always do. Um, but there you go, that's a good shot of the, uh, how you can see how, the, you know, how it's made up, but it's, it is, it's very, very fine. I can see it's for silverfish, obviously, as the name suggests. But there's not much flavor coming off it, not much not much odor, to be fair. Um, it's very, very mild, if you want to use that word. Um, so there we go, I don't want to add any more water to that. That's probably going to dry out a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it 20 minutes, which I think is a fair amount of time um, for a mix like this. So I'm going to give it 20 minutes, and then what I'm going to do, we're just going to have a look at, see how it performs underwater. I'm going to put it in a cage feeder and we'll film it and see how it breaks down when it's actually underwater. 
Well, that's been exactly 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do before we put it in the tank, I'm just gonna see if we can over wet it. I mean, I haven't put this through a sieve and as you can see, that's still really, really fine. There's not many lumps in there at all. So I'm not even gonna put it through a sieve. I mean, to mix it like that with, you know, with, with your hand and for it to be as fine as that, I think that's great. Um, it feels quite a light, fluffy mix. It's quite a fluffy mix, a light mix. Um, it reminds me of the old mixers that we used to have on the canal where we used to put, when we were juniors, we used to put that much air into the into the mix and we had it that dry that when you threw a ball in it, it used to flow. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's when we used to use a lot of the canal mixers, the really light, fluffy mixers. Um, so I'm just gonna see if we can overwet this one. Then that'll let us know how versatile it is to see if you can use it in different ways. And there we go, as you can see straight away, no problem. Dead easy to overwet. And you can have that to whatever consistency you want. I'll even try on this occasion, we'll try and overwet it and we'll try a wet, a wet cloud in the tank as well, just so we can see what comes off it as it goes in. Okay, well that's lovely and wet now. Just about fish with that in a feeder, I think. I have to stiffen it up slightly, but so you could fish with that in a in a feeder, or obviously you could feed it on the pole line. But that shows you that you can overwet it, so you can use this just with one mix. You can have lots of different consistencies throughout the session. So so that's you know that's great because it means you can do lots of different things with it. But let's let's get it in the tank and see how it performs underwater. Well, as with all the tests in this series, I'm just going to squeeze. Squeeze this to a medium consistency, so it's still, it feels really fluffy, really nice and light, but I'm not gonna squeeze that in too much. I mean, I could easily cast that, you could cast that 40, 50 meters, so I'm not packing it in too tight, and we'll just see how long it takes to actually break down in the tank. There we go. So straight away you can see that there isn't any cloud coming off it as such. Lots of little tiny air bubbles coming off it, but that's what I said, it's really kind of, it feels like a really nice fluffy mix, and that's why it's breaking down so quick. Look how quick that's breaking down. A Little bit of a haze around it, but that's really, it's one of the fastest breaking down mixes that I've seen. I could have obviously mixed this a little bit wetter, a little bit heavier, and squeezed it in tighter, but obviously I want to try and make every one of these tests the same. That's, well, that's just about done. I mean, that's been in less than a minute and it's just completely broken down. I can see why, you know, this is the kind of mix that you might want to use on shallow water um, on its own and mix like this. Obviously, if I was to add more water to this, then you, it will bind a lot more. That's why, you know, it shows you on the bag that it can be it used for balling in. But just look at that straight away. There's no cloud around it. Um, there's virtually, well, just air bubbles coming off. There's nothing floating. There's nothing up, I'm looking on top now. There's nothing there. That's broken down really quickly. It's very, very fine. Sometimes when you see it in the tank like this and one, once the mix has got wet, you can see the larger feed particles, you know, because they've absorbed a bit of water and it's easier to see them than it was just looking through the window on the packaging on the bag. But as you can see there, there's, there's you know, virtually nothing there. And that's just completely inert now. Completely inert. And that looks like it's been there for half an hour. That's just completely broken down. And that's what it is. Brilliant. What I'm going to do now is just, just take the feeder out now and uh, see if it kicks off any sort of a cloud or anything. One go. Lovely attractive brown cloud there. That's nice, but it is dispersing quite quick. It's amazing how just bringing the feeder out like that can spread your bait out even more. I mean, that was only, I've only lifted that, you know, straight up. Imagine dragging it out of your peg on an open water reservoir or something like that, it'd really spread out. but. There we go, there's just a bit of a cloud, a bit of a haze around it. But that's nice, I like that. It's a lovely, nice, fluffy mix. What I'll do now is I'll just get this over wet bit here, and let's just have a look at what the wet cloud is from it. Because this will give us an idea of what you can actually do with the mix. I'm not gonna have it too wet. Let's just have it as a nice, sloppy ball. See if it just sinks to the bottom. See if it just sinks to the bottom and, and stays in one, um, one ball, like a paste or whether we are going to get some, some cloud off it. We'll drop it down the centre of the tank. Oh, it has. It has done that. So, whilst, I mean, that consistency is, you could probably just about get away with it in a feeder like that, just, but not in a big cast. It doesn't have to be a lob. But as you can see, there's nothing on that. That is just, that's just sitting on the bottom as one inert ball. 
and that's how we use it a lot of the time you know if you're targeting bream and bigger fish but uh, but yeah I can see when it's in its initial state lovely and fluffy really light the ideal for silverfish well I can see why Andy flagged this mix up to me because this obviously suits a lot of the sort of fishing that I do certainly through winter having done a little bit of research on the mix it looks like it was a new mix that was out in autumn 2019 so it is still pretty much uh, a new mix having had a quick look on the internet at all the tackle shops up and down the country there are loads and loads of stockists of dynamite ground baits that's one of the great things about it it's quite easy to get hold of and these particular bags these are 900 gram bags and the most common price that I've seen everywhere is four pounds 15 so you know it is one of the, at, at the cheaper end of the ground baits but I can see why this mix is suitable for what Andy and, and the lads have been using it for this winter but as soon as I get a chance to get out on the bank this is definitely a mix that I'm going to be giving a go probably in conjunction with some of the other mixes as well and I'll certainly let you know how I get on with it if you don't want to miss any out on any of the other videos in this series just please hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you want to see more of this type of video and if you want to see more coaching style tuition videos check out Patreon TV Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.